call the meeting to order. The vote on the minutes from September 10th. Is there a motion? We have October 10th and October 24th. I'm sorry, I went to the wrong place. I don't have them with me. And I will confess, I didn't look at them. The one for the 24th was our abridged meeting where all we talked about is, I can, do you want me to send them both around again right now? Sure. I'm sorry. No, 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 that's fine, I can do that. It's um, not it's, been a good week. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay, let me- I do I'm have the director's go. report for 11 14 okay. so. But we could start there while I see if I can get these. And do you want me to? Do you want me to send them, Allison? I am right Do you there. have them right there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have them, but I, I don't have them. I have 1024. Yeah. Who do I send them to? Just Lynn or everybody? Yes, just me. I just Lynn. Yeah. Just Lynn? Okay. Well, in the meantime, Patrick, why don't you start with the director's report? Okie dokie. Uh, so, if, uh, right off the top, I will highlight um, that again, our patron count for, um, sorry, October, not September, but for October was again 50%, uh, roughly 50% higher than it was um, for the same month last year, uh, which is a huge amount. Um, mm -hmm. We have, uh, we have started back with a regular schedule of staff meetings. Um, I am doing them sort of in two tiers because um, a lot of the discussion, um, and forgive me if I talked about this at the last meeting, but the way we've kind of like worked it out is that there's sort of two tiers of conversation that go on. One is between, you know, uh, Sue and Julia and myself because there's sort of bigger picture stuff where we need to kind of hash it out. Um, and then, uh, a general staff meeting where we can sort of talk about the more granular day-to-day -day things that are more like what people need to know and everybody needs to be on the same page about. So we're going to be doing the um, the meetings with Julia and Sue and myself will be the first Wednesday at noon and then um, the bi-monthly, we're going to do bi-monthly meetings with staff because it is hard to get, it's easy to get the people that are full-time to that meeting. It's hard to get the people that are not scheduled to work at that time to um, willingly agree to come in for an hour and a half in the middle of the day that they're not otherwise scheduled to work. So bi-monthly meeting every two months as opposed yeah. to bi-monthly, which somehow yeah. also means twice a month. Twice, twice, every other month. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. Is what we're doing. I don't mm -hmm. want to zoom in. What's that? Zooming. Zooming? Maybe. We could we could start doing that if that's if that's going to be a thing where people can't do it. But even so, it's still time that mm -hmm. you know there is their own, and they may or may not be available in the middle of the day mm -hmm. that they don't work because you know people have other commitments and um, and what have you. So we're trying to make that work. Um, and I am summarizing the meetings if people are not there. Um, I'm sort of putting together um, uh, an email for everyone so that there's sort of a recap of the details yeah. that people need to be aware of. So things that are you know date related or. Um, you know, we're, we're working on a, updating the process for securing the building because we've had some, we've had some issues and things are just changing in general. Um, so we're just, we're going to be doing some procedural things that everybody needs to be on the same page about, like sort of like checklist type stuff. Um, so we're working on getting that together and um, making sure that everyone knows all of the information that they need to know. Um, the roof update, I wanted to... So I sent out, what I basically did is I, I did a search of um, building envelope consultants um, in Massachusetts and then just sort of went through, you know, the top four or five of those and just sent out an email summarizing the, you know, summarizing our experience and what we're looking for. Um, so far I've gotten two responses and for both of, the, for both of those consultants I've uploaded the as-built drawings so that they can look at those 
get familiar with the building and then put together a proposal for, for, you know, the, for the work if they're um, interested in pursuing it. Um, so that's where that stands. Um, hopefully at least one more of those folks will get back to me. Um, Need a planting project is sort of uh, a preliminary go. I did meet with Scott McCarthy. He looked at the spot that we were looking at and said he had, didn't have any concerns beyond making sure that we didn't cover over. I mean, he didn't, he didn't even say that we had to keep the planting within the perimeter. He said we could have some of those manhole covers like in the garden, they just needed to be accessible. So, um, and his other concern was to making sure that the roots of anything that we plant are not so you know, vigorous and deep that they're going to go in and you know penetrate concrete or whatever is down below and cause that to um, to <laughs> fail prematurely. So I said that, that we could let them know that we just want shallow root systems and sort of more meadowy things than anything um, like trees or big bushes. Mm -hmm. um, we're still working on that the aspen um, stuff that was mentioned in a previous meeting. Um, there was a another demo that took place together took place today at a user's council meeting over Zoom to sort of talk about the functionality. It was more the functionality of the catalog and less um, what we can do as far as like building a website off of that, but it, it, it is going to be a vastly improved experience for people using the library catalog and how it's organized. Um, library of Things um, did request use of some small amount of space in the Goodwin, um, wherever it could be. Um, given to us and that was, that request was denied. Um, so we're gonna be looking at other possibilities for that. The other- Do you have ideas for that sort of alternatives? Um, <clears throat> they're, they're ideas, they're not necessarily convenient ideas, um, but you can make it work. And you know, we'll, be look, we'll, we'll have to be looking more critically at what we lend to make sure that it's of a size that we can really accommodate. And if, mm -hmm. if it's going to be something bigger than that, there has to be a really good reason for why we're going to, you know, make that sacrifice of space. Mm -hmm. What's up? Did they say why we can't use the good one? Like, is it? <clears throat> um, so there were several. There were several issues. Some of which I was able to speak to um, about access to the building. There, there were concerns about people going into the good one. Um, whether they were staff or members of the public. Because uh, the public wouldn't be going in. I know, right? I explained just... that, I explained <laughs> that. So um, there, were, there were some misconceptions about the, pro the project itself, some of which I thought were kind of inappropriate just because it's sort of like a sense of, oh, this is gonna become like the thing that at my church where people dump stuff and then we've got like a dumping ground of donated stuff and I said no it's not really gonna be like that it's gonna be very curated and mm -hmm. um, nothing's gonna be that's not what this is so I was able to speak to that but but in the end um, in speaking to Carolyn she essentially said well you know at some point this building is going to be renovated there's gonna be work in there and then you'd have to move it mm -hmm. so what would you do then and I said well I don't know this was my this was my first step now as a fallback to the to not having space here so I said we'll figure it out um, is there anything we can do to advocate for it as trustees? Like Relative to the, I, to the good one? To, or to the library to, things to, generally? To getting the space? I mean, I just think about access to, for, for someone working in the library to get the item. It's, it's really very convenient. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's not like we're the only library that has a library of things. This isn't like, Mm -hmm. a new concept that's right you know I, I, is there anything that we could at this do point, to help clarify at this or? point no I don't think there's really any, any more clarity that, that can be had it, it's really sort of like a um, it's it's something that we'll have to contend with just in terms of our own you know staying within our own footprint and using this space we, it's not a hill that I really want to um, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and it's something that can be revisited later, right? So as we build out the library yeah. of things and have things here, mm -hmm. right, we might technically exceed our space, right? Or someone might give us a donation of something so big and wonderful that the town might be interested in mm -hmm. saying, yes, we want to have that. Because if the alternative is, no, we can't have that because we don't have space, right? So I feel like just because it was denied now, doesn't mean it will always be denied. Yeah. I mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I know that there are plans for that building, and I can't really 
I don't know what they are or what the timeline is for them. So I, I, you know, I will have to defer to their judgment on okay, whether yeah. that's a good use of the space um, and whether we just have to turn around and move anything that was in there. But it was really just, it's, the point was just to have a fallback so that if we had something that we'd know where we'd be able to yeah. put it, just mm -hmm. a couple yeah. of shelves. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll, it's not going to stop us from doing anything, and it doesn't, it doesn't interrupt the timeline of, um, of us getting this started. So we just need circulation to be so good that we never actually have to store any of the Ooh. stuff. <laughs> <There> you, <go. laughs> you just drop it off at the next person's exactly. house. Exactly. Yes. That would exactly. be amazingly convenient. Yes. Um, so the other, the other fun thing about this project that is just sort of a happenstance thing, but we had a, we were contacted by someone at Smith College that's working. It's an education major that's working with the. Mm -hmm. um, Smith College Campus School, and they're, those, the kids, the students are doing, they're doing the kind of like Lego, um, I can't think of what it's called, the Lego League the thing, robot. the robotics mm -hmm. thing that we've been involved in mm -hmm. here. Um, but those kids have, there's a component of what they're doing that is like a sort of a community service component, and they have to come up with a, you know, a project, and one the thing that they wanted to do would be to partner with um, a library or libraries to have a sort of lending library of Legos. And at first I thought that this was in order for the kids to do the robotics thing, but it's, it's not that necessarily. It's just that they feel that there's a kind of barrier, financial barrier to entry with Legos because they're very expensive. Yeah. And so I said, well, that would be great because we're starting this library of things. This would be something, I mean, it was actually something that I had already thought about because we have so many Legos that have been I was about to ask, would you like more? Please. Because I, mean, I have I mean, a giant I mean, bin in my closet I mean, that I, I would yeah, love I know, to. I know, well, at the same we time that I'm saying we have no space, <laughs> I'm also saying you can never have too many Legos. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Legos will not stay here. They will be on constant yeah. loan. Yeah. 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 So the short answer is probably yes. Mm -hmm. we'll can we go back in time so yeah. that there was a library of things when my kids were little and I didn't yeah. buy that many Legos? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So um, so that's cool. And it, it's going to be nice um, in the sense that I think the way this is going to work is that we're going to take a bunch of like some, one of those big bins of Legos over to the you know the, the college kids that are organizing this, and then they'll take it in to the younger kids, and then they'll sort through it and put you know put things into lendable kits into some mm -hmm. form that they'll be able to take out. So I'm excited that's about that. Cause it, that's a yeah, kind of that is exciting. Synergy. Mm -hmm. um, donor recognition. I, you probably saw that the new plaques for 2022 are on the wall, um, and I did put something on Facebook saying, you know before the end of the year, if you want to be on for 2023, then get your donation in. Um, I did check, as of tonight, we hadn't received any new donations since we'd made that announcement, but still, I think people just, or, you know, I think we'll get some, and I've ha I have had interest, I've had people inquire at the desk about it, um, they just haven't made a, um, a contribution yet. Um, we did request a quote for from Thayer Street, the company that's done a lot of the woodwork in the building, for um, a community bulletin board out here because the table thing has outlived mm -hmm. its um, desire. It's not. It's we don't. We want to get rid of that table. Yeah. We're tired of the mess by the front door, yeah. and you know we should have like a proper bulletin board. So it's the, the idea is to cite it right here in the hall, sort of out of the way where people you know, coming around the corner can put things up and it won't be the first thing that you see when you walk into the building. That's awesome. I like literally just saw a community build bulletin board two days ago and I thought, why don't we have one of those in the library? <laughs> so, yay. Yes, this is one of those things that just, we've been talking about it for a long time and, um, and recently it's one of those things where the, you know, having the table with things on it it's fine, it's great, um, but it's also kind of a nuisance because people are continually coming in and sort of stretching what they can put on the table. Mm -hmm. So we've got stacks of things, mm -hmm. we've got you know things with brochures and everything else. We're kind of like, mm, um, we'd rather just have a bulletin board where you can either tack something up or not, and, yeah. and that's it. So that's what we're going to try to do. That's a genius idea. Rather than trying to police the table, just <laughs> well, you the I mean, table we should have just had the bulletin board in the first place. That's what that would have yes. been genius. Yeah. That would have yeah. been yeah, next level. Still, but we, we yeah, couldn't think of everything. Then you have more room too. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to bring up. This is uh, sort of something that I've been thinking about for a while, and I, I'm wondering um, what the trustees mm -hmm. will think of it. But I, I would, I think that it's time, particularly now. Um, that we have so much volunteer um, energy going into the day-to-day -day operation of the library. I think it would be great 
if we could start something where we, in an annual way, begin to single out volunteers for appreciation for the work that they do, um, you know, often over the course of many years and putting in many, many hours. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what form uh, or fashion that should take, but I thought it was something that I would bring to the trustees to see if it's a discussion that we could mm -hmm. have going into the new year um, and figure out what form that could take if, if you all are amenable to, to doing something like that. So my first question is like, do we single out one volunteer each year or do we celebrate all of the volunteers or do we find a way to do both of those things? My vote is for yeah, choice like C. Both. both. Yeah. Yeah. But I like both. Definitely. So yeah, like, a there, like a volunteer of the month? Like I don't know if it would be every month because there's not that we, we there's not that many volunteers, mm -hmm. but I think I do think that um, you know there are people that go above and beyond. I mean, all of the all the people that are volunteers here go above and beyond. But I'm thinking of someone like you know a Marilyn Brown who has worked in the library every Tuesday for I mean as long as I've been here. I don't even know when she started, but it, it, for as long as I've been here, she's been putting in you know Seven four months. or five hours. Oh. Of, of, she's here before I get here. Yeah, I mean, she gets here right before we open and, and sticks around until about three. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, she's super helpful. She's really, mm -hmm. really done a lot. And not only that, but she's involved in the friends. She's involved in helping to maintain the landscaping and the gardening. And it's, you know, so I'm, I'm singling her out because she's a great example of the, the kind of energy that volunteers bring to the library that for us is so incredibly um, indispensable. We can't really function without it. Could, I mean, I'm with Jessica and both, and I, I think you know a lot of places or boards I've been on have like a volunteer appreciation mm -hmm. event mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once yeah. a year. We could have like a breakfast or mm -hmm. just like a you know bagels or like whatever we could do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But an afternoon cookies. But sure. I think about the event that we had for the donor wall, and it wasn't that hard to do, and it was really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, like it was a pretty simple event. We could even make it, you know, a, a little more simple. We can and have a nice event acknowledging our volunteers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What time of year do we think? I mean, we probably should wait for after the holidays, right? I didn't have a timeline. I just thought it was something that we should maybe start considering. Mm -hmm. um, you know, knowing how long, you know, some of the people that have, that are doing this have been with us. Um, it seemed like it was high time to do, do it. You, does it make sense or does it not make sense to combine it with the donors from the donor wall for that year? Is there a way to make that work together or is that weird and funky? <clears throat> I think it's different. It is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I was just trying to, mm -hmm. I I was just trying to float <laughs> and be mm -hmm. creative. I wonder, I, my first response was because I organized something on campus when I was still there. And it was, used, they used to have, oh, we're going to nominate someone. And it was always the department that took the time to nominate someone that won, not because people who deserved it weren't put forward. Mm -hmm. And I organized an everybody thing. And I think that's extremely important. And I wonder if longevity might be a way to single out some donors, or not, I mean, some donors of their time. Mm -hmm. um, like a non judgment call. Yes. Doing it, or like hours volunteered this year, or years total volunteered, or something. I mean, some kind of yeah. recognition at 5, 10, 15, mm. perhaps. Mm. Mm -hmm. Which would be yeah. objective yeah. rather than subjective, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, what if you had the volunteers nominate and choose the volunteer so there was not jealousy? They don't always, they're not they very don't, they don't know, they don't know they don't what know the other ones do. You know, they don't always yeah. observe what the others are doing. I, my thought was to have the staff, this be a staff thing mm -hmm. where staff, you know, because that. The, particularly the folks that are working on the front desk see they know they're working directly mm -hmm. with this with the volunteers so you know sue at this point has become the organizer of volunteers she's the contact point and the and the you know general organizer and scheduler 
Um, and so she sees, you know, she knows exactly what everybody's up to and, and what they're doing and, um, and, and how helpful each person's work is. So my thought was to, to have it be someone that, you know, a nomination by the staff to say, we really want to recognize this person this year because we know specifically what they did. Mm -hmm. But How many people volunteer, are, are like sort of current volunteers or have volunteered in the last year? Uh, it sort of depends like ballpark, on any, but yeah, like I mean, it depends on it, it depends on. Is it more than twenty? It's, it's probably in the twenty range, and then okay. if you start to think about like what you know, friends related stuff, mm -hmm. then it gets higher. Um, but it's it's probably about twenty people that reliably come in to yeah. do stuff in the library. There are also people that have come and done stuff outside the library, gardening and weeding and doing things like that, mm -hmm. just showing up and doing it. So, what I would. What I would suggest, one, yes, I love the event thing, because then that's a way of recognizing everyone all at once, and I think that's the most important thing. And then, like, maybe there's a, a couple of categories. Like, I don't imagine we're talking about, like, a giant volunteer award of, you know, like, huge no. monetary or something like that. So why not give out, like, a few awards each year, like the, like the garden, like the garden superstar yeah. and the, like, most hours worked and the longevity them. award or something like that, just yeah. so that because there's more people being celebrated. I, I think that's a good point. And the other thing of it is that I don't think that people want, I think a lot of people are um, sort of averse to, they don't want to be shouting with attention. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are just like, I just came here to yep. shelter yeah. bugs. Yep. I don't yep. really want to. Right. But they might come for a breakfast, right? Yeah. They right. might come but for a lunch make or it, something. Make it very informal and yeah. make it very fun and not like, you know, you're going to the Academy to, Awards. To, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just like a, a coffee and some munchkins and uh, and a and a thank you for Yeah, for, we could do that. We can do better than yeah. munchkins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing's better. <laughs> I guess we're like divided on munchkins. Yeah. <laughs> so, so is this undermining the, the appreciation of all the, you know, the, it, you're talking about a, a, a thing to appreciate all the volunteers yeah. and then a thing to appreciate one, Some of one them. five, six volunteers. Um, if, you, if you're going to appreciate all the volunteers every year, why not make the, the special individual award special for not necessarily this year's winner, but this year we have somebody we really want to recognize for, for, for special service above what we're recognizing everybody for. Otherwise, doesn't it sort of diminish the, the celebration of all the volunteers? I, I mean, aren't they the, the supporting players in the, in the, the major awards? I'm, I'm not sure I'm following what you mean. So you're saying it diminishes it by not having sing, singled someone out to be like the, or? No, by singling somebody out, th that's in, this is the, the main event. Yeah. And we, all you guys are great, thanks, but Ellen is wonderful. <laughs> oh, you're saying just have a group celebration, and, not But But then group. once in a while, when it's obvious to, to the staff or somebody, like there's somebody who hasn't been recognized, and this year would be a good time to do it but not feel like we have to fill a slot every, every year. year. Mm. Could Actually, be that the categories change from year to year. Yeah. That they're, we want to we wanted like mm. honor three important volunteers and here's what they've brought to the library this year. Um, doesn't have to be like star award Can every I year or something. Maybe it would be good to, to have a conversation with Sue yeah. in <laughs> terms of identifying what she sees as the areas of recognition or if there truly is an individual who has not you know maybe gotten the attention or I'm just from what I see I keep thinking how much money the town is saving by not having staff members because the level of work that folks are doing is above just grab a volunteer off the street. Mm -hmm. But ask Sue. I mean, well, I, I think talk the about it. She's, generally, yeah. she's generally, I mean, she's supportive of the idea. Yeah. I mean, we, did, we did talk about it. And, um, and again, I don't think, you know, I don't want to, I don't think it's something that we really should get like so lost in the weeds about, about how this goes. I just feel like, it would be really great to just once a year 
however we do it, mm -hmm. that we just should be like highlighting the value of volunteers and, and thanking them. And if it maybe this year we don't do anything beyond just having like a coffee and Danish's kind of thing um, one morning and just inviting volunteers to attend and just to thank them, that that might be sufficient and then we'll just see if it evolves over time yeah um, but I just know that there are you know there are people that have put in so many mm -hmm. years now and it, it, you know it's really starting to hit me how long they've been here and how much they've done over time and it, it just seems like the kind of thing we really should highlight can I also suggest that maybe outside of a general volunteer recognition event that I would certainly be willing to authorize the expenditure of, you know, however much if Sue decided that just because on this occasion she wanted to recognize Joanne, who puts, does all of the book prep for loading stuff into the catalog, mm -hmm. to go and buy some flowers or a plant or something. You can't do that with town money. I'm not planning to do it with town money. We have other resources. Gotcha. Well, I mean, Joanne specifically is a tax, a tax, um, you know, she's doing like the tax abatement thing. So right. whether or not you consider her, she's technically, I believe, considered an employee, but uh, your point is well taken. There are many people doing many things like that. and. Um, we could, we could do that again if, if one person, if the trustees feel like we should highlight one person because um, we can do it either way. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that outside of and that sort of as a more one on one rather than oh, sure. a broader recognition. I mean, yes, there should be an event to which all volunteers mm -hmm. are invited. But even like Joanne, even though she's on that program, she continues to work beyond sure. yeah. her commitment sure. so that, yep. I mean, she still is a mm -hmm. volunteer. Mm -hmm. But if, if, there, if Sue were moved for whatever reason, then I would certainly like her to see her be able to do something in the moment when it's recognizing, you know, something specific or, you know, this is the thousandth day that Marilyn has, or, you know, 500th or 250th day that Marilyn has come to do whatever. And that's a lot. And so she shows up on that day and there's flowers in a balloon or something. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to, but ask her if she thinks that that's something that would work for her as an alternative. I mean, maybe not, and that's fine. Yeah, I will, I, I'll, have a, I'll have a further conversation with her and, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Is this something we wanna just sort of table until the next, until the next meeting? And well, I think you certainly work. have everyone's consensus yep. that yes, we should do something I would vote for like March or April when it's starting to get light. You know, if we did something on one of the days when the library opens later. Yeah. I was thinking March is past the rush of things and it's sort of a lull time mm -hmm. of year. But I think yeah. the first one should just be maybe a group effort and then I mean, we could make notes and just say, you know, we just want to acknowledge that so-and-so has been volunteering in the library for 15 years and so-and-so has been volunteering in the library for 10 years and so-and-so yeah. and, so, and you know, we thank everyone for it. And the tricky part of that is that we don't, unlike you personnel, know. we don't have, <laughs> it's some, some of these things are lost so in the time. Records. We have no right. idea. Yeah. No we idea. just have really been here a long I, time. Right. I actually, I, I think, I think if there are some folks who have done like, really quite amazing things. I don't think that recognizing them at this event diminishes other people's contributions. I think about 
I don't know. I think when I've been in circumstances like that where I'm like an occasional volunteer and someone's being applauded for their amazing work, I'm excited for them and like really happy to be appreciating them as well. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that it then makes me feel like, well, gosh, what about what I did? Um, I think it just adds to the sense of celebration and kind of, um, I don't know, I think it's a little bit inspiring and, and, um, and I mean, unless the person objects to being recognized publicly, I think there is also something to the, you know, naming it in front of others that they've been doing this thing for so long, even if they've been doing it quietly or, or humbly or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with the like, here's some flowers, but like, I think being recognized for significant contributions like that is meaningful. Probably. And I think that the, the people yeah. invited would celebrate that. As long as it was in the spirit of like, we're celebrating everybody. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right? So yeah, it sounds yeah. like maybe the only like, homework is trying to figure out how are we defining mm. the volunteers so you know how many there are so we yep. know like for planning purposes yep. you know yeah and I, I mean I have a list every year of like who has been who's a current volunteer because we you know again this is something that we report to the Board of Library Commissioners so I you know every year I say who's who volunteered this year and then we yeah. get a rough estimate of how many hours they, they did so that we can report that um, so we, we can do that and we can talk about um, you know We'll, we'll talk, we'll come up with some more ideas and then at the, you know, probably the next meeting or the meeting after that, we'll say, this is what we're thinking. What do you think? Is this something that, you know, that the trustees will support and um, sort of, I mean, I think that's kind of what I'm looking for is that the trustees will sort of absolutely be mm -hmm. the, the ones saluting the volunteers. You know what I mean? Um, because we, you know, we thank them every day when they're here. We, we're always very really yeah. effusive in, in, um, in thanking them. but. Uh, it just seems like something more formal is, is maybe called for. That, that that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that's that's all. I guess okay. anyone has a question about it. Uh, I, I have a very minor question. Sure. Um, you did a patron count or something like that. Do you keep track of circulation in the same way? We do, and it's it's here as well. So the uh, tally for this for October was 4,938 items circulated, which is up um, nearly 8% for the same month this year. So, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we'll go back to minutes. I just had one question about the minutes. I'm listed as co-chair. Am I co-chair or vice chair? <laughs> I don't know. What I am I? <laughs> Who right. am I? Right. <laughs> what am I doing place. here? <laughs> I thought you were vice chair. I thought you were. Vice. I thought that's what I thought. Well, the the good news is is that I have not officially posted any of our minutes because I'm <laughs> waiting for you know the everything to yep. be signed yep. so I can go back and change it to vice chair everywhere. Awesome. Because it's been there the whole time, and I just noticed it today. Thank you. Do we have a motion to approve? The minutes from, from October 10th or the 24th? With the vice change. So my question is, mm -hmm. is it the case that the October 10th minutes have that in the title, but they say September 10th at the top of them? I'm looking at mine. HPL minutes 10, 10, 23. Mine say October 10th. Meeting call to order 701. Minute motion to approve minutes from September 12th. But up at the top of that, in the heading, it says September 10th? Mine say October 10th. Maybe you have an old Whatever version. Whatever Joanne sent me says September 10th. Maybe I sent a version and then I changed it. I don't know. I yeah. sent it around so long It says ago. September 10th. OK. Well, yeah, I, I probably a... saw that and changed it. Yeah. So my version I'm looking at says October 10th. OK. And now says Vice Chair.
Okay. So do I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 10th? So moved. Are there any additional corrections or changes? All in favor? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And October 24th. I move to approve. As previously amended, are there any further corrections or comments? All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Um, director's goals. Susan and I met with Patrick couple weeks ago and took the comments that you all have made um, and discussed them with Patrick and we came to a sense that organizing them under these three larger headings seemed to be a more reasonable way to go rather than just to have a list of items. Um, I think we have already seen that in terms of communication and management that Patrick has implemented some of these things and I have every reason to expect that that will continue to be the case. Um, You never got to me about any of the... You didn't provide me with any feedback from the initial draft that I sent you, so I'm going to... I, yeah, I mean, I think it, 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 it encapsulates what was discussed in that meeting. I don't think it was... Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. Does anybody else have any comments or changes? Join. So I looked at it kind of initially, and I think a lot about uh, the the last review that I sat and listened to, um, and I have some concerns about the vagueness of the language because if Patrick's <coughs> going to be evaluated on like launched on communication number three, launched in a timely manner. Everyone may have a very different definition of what timely is. Same thing with reasonable cost, regular schedule of meetings. They feel very vague to me, and a year from now, a different group could be sitting here, and one person may think that something is timely, and one person may not, and that may be a five and a two. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing they were like, you know, like a five and a two. Um, I know when I wrote my goals, I was very specific about them for that reason, because I think it's unfair to, to have then a rating system and not have language that clearly names like what we're looking for. And then the second question I have is, I read the third sentence under management. I'm sorry, I don't really understand what that says. I think that was in reference to what was initially going to be like the community survey and is now going to be strategic planning. I assume that's what upcoming planning sessions refers to. Yes, that's what we had in mind. So I'm just, uh, I, I can't speak to that, that one I, I don't know either, but um, I, I also, I agree with Joanne Right, so I was the one who wrote about the um, staff meetings. I mean, maybe other people did too, but I said something like, you know, the director should meet with the staff once a month, every month, 
of the year, right? Like with the entire staff, you know, I kind of made it very specific. Um, so I think that in addition to making it specific, there should be a date for the goal itself. So something like meeting staff meetings, you know, obviously you would do it all year, but it would be, you shall establish the staff meeting by December 1st. I mean, obviously you've already done it, right? But you know, that, that goal is already met. But mm -hmm. I, I agree with Joanne that without it, how does Patrick know that he's met the goal? Mm -hmm. um, so could, if we added a, you know, a date that each one of these should be completed, and then, I mean, if, if the date of completion for all of these is the, you know, the end of the fiscal year, that's fine, but. And, and I think, like, I think, and maybe Allison doesn't agree, like, it doesn't have to be that we decide how often that Patrick has meetings, but it can say that agreed upon by Patrick and the board, mm -hmm. so that, mm -hmm. I'm just really concerned, like, when I write my goals at work, like, they have to be quantifiable so that someone can rate them on a scale, and they have to be able to say, like, did this or didn't do that, mm -hmm. and I feel like, you know, everyone has a different definition. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm happy to, if goal number three has to do with the, um, the strategic plan, mm -hmm. maybe it could say something like the director will help lead the strategic, I mean, part of the director's mm -hmm. role in the strategic plan is to write the goals. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I can show that when I show that timeline of the strategic plan, maybe that would be helpful. I'm wondering about the last two. Um, oop, I just closed it, sorry. Um, the buildings and grounds one, if I recall, it, those actually just seem to be things that are in the job description and are not necessarily, I, I, I guess yeah. I didn't understand why they were, why they were set as goals. Um, oops, that's the wrong thing. Oh, I had it, I had it. Yeah, I think I, I part of that one started uh, because there were specific things to this year with the new building, like the sidewalk and then the roof issue uh, and those things that were sort of ongoing concerns mm -hmm. um, for this year. Um, Beyond routine maintenance. Right, that was unique to the situation. So this being annual goals, so for this setting of this year uh, to put in some resolution to that so that the roof doesn't just become this, oh yeah, we never, it never got resolved, mm -hmm. you know, the front door mechanism. But so much of that's done. out of Patrick's hands. I feel like we're evaluating him based on what outside contractors are able to do or not do. Correct, versus like Patrick will secure three estimates for uh, roof work. Right, mm -hmm. that's a quantifiable thing that is within his control. I mean, okay, maybe you won't really be able to get three, but <laughs> no, but that's the goal, right? Yeah. Um, and that's more specific. And if like if this is supposed to encapsulate those types of larger things, if we could just name them that we are hoping that he does, if it's the roof, and then make you know a series of quantifiable, you know, like interface with a uh, roofer that will be doing the work, you know once the bid is secured, right? Because if we don't secure the bid, then Patrick can't be held accountable for it. So it comes June 30th, Patrick says, I haven't made goal 75, and we'll say, well, we never, the bid never was, went out, because they never wrote the bid. Thus, you're not accountable for that. Versus he is accountable for going out and getting the three estimates, right? You've already started doing that. And if you come back to us and say, hey, I only got two bids, the thing I put, you know, I've sent 10,000 emails over the past three months, I only got two bids, then we note that in the goals. Patrick did this, he only got two. Goals satisfied, right? Like, I feel like they should be a, a little bit... Flexible. Flexible, because, I mean, I agree with you 100% that if a goal is not within your own personal a mm -hmm. ability to attain, I mean, you can't, you know, if your goal was 100% staff retention, like, you can yeah. try, but you can't do that. But same with the estimates. Mm -hmm. But at least you can try to go get them, you know, versus you can't actually put a roof on. 
you solely cannot, none of us, like the trustees, cannot make sure that it cannot be our goal, get a new roof for library because we are not the ones who are in charge of bid documents. Mm -hmm. But I think the way that these two go these two goals are written, they they really do read like n normal, like this is part of the job description, right? Ensuring the cleanliness of the building. Um, and I re re recognize that that's written in the context of like there's changes to custodial services and so on. Um, uh, but. I mean, I, don't, I, I, I wouldn't know how to check that one off and say like, well, you don't have to do that next year. <laughs> I guess I'm a, I'm a little bit um, confused, and I was a little bit confused this, this year um, about how this is all going to play in, mm -hmm. whether it's this list, um, whether it's the, whatever the instruments will be that will be handed out to amongst the trustees or to the staff or to me. Um, and then how, how this plays into it. I mean, I, um, to, to a large degree, I mean, a lot of what I come to these meetings for is to get the things that I'm then going to turn around mm -hmm. and do the next day based on, you know, whatever the collective will of the trustees was. So, um, you know, I always have, I always have these goals. And I'm not saying that I, it's not valuable to have these things, but, um, Sometimes it does feel, and and it did, in a, to a degree. When I first saw the original list of what was put together, it did kind of look like the, you know, the what was it? I'm not going to get into frog and toad, but um, it seemed again like sort of like a task list. And I still feel like the document that we were using wasn't necessarily broken that we used for a number of years. Um, it served us well and it seemed to encapsulate it. I understand it's not necessarily relevant to the staff and I think that that's something else that maybe should be considered, but um, but I think it did break down the, you know, the job pretty well into its constituent components and pretty much covered the waterfront. Um, whether things could be added or taken away at this point um, is another matter, but it was generally relevant um, and easy to understand and I felt like we were all on the same page in terms of coming to evaluation time and, what we were doing so so I'm still a little bit confused about the bigger picture of how we're doing how we're doing these evaluations and how everything is going to be measured at the end of the day isn't the evaluation though like business as usual like how are you doing on budget how are you doing on staff you know I, I mean I still think management that, you know to Jess's point some of these things do feel like they are business as usual mm -hmm. correct yeah. and I would agree with Jess but I don't think we should not have a way to evaluate business as usual, right? So I think I thought maybe I'm confused that the goals were supposed to be, hey, in addition, in addition to business as usual, sure. what are right. a few things that, you know, the same way I have goals, like mm -hmm. I have to still, you know, meet with my staff every week and blah, 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 do all these things. But right. I also have very specific goals that are sort of, okay, you need to do this by this date. So it's both, like I get evaluated on both overall. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what this was. I, I'm in agreement that those two either need to be removed because they are already being evaluated or we just need to make them, you know, Susan has the context of what they are, so let's make them mm -hmm. specific. Or, or are you suggesting just have the goals and not have the evaluation form? I, I Not necessarily, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the, that, that form, since most of the things that are contain, contained here can slot into the various elements of the job, because there's nothing on here that doesn't really fall into some aspect of my job description. There, there are things that are specific to this year we're going yeah. to do yes, X, Y, exactly. and Z, but they still fall into yes. how I'm going to be graded by um, you know, building maintenance issues or whatever. There were specific concerns this year. That would be a place in that review to call them out and say these were the concerns for this year did a good job did a lousy job didn't really wasn't in sync with what you know the collective will of the trustees was on these issues or did a, did a good job and and finish those things off so i understand it's good to identify these things but if that's how we're i just want to be clear on how we're 
where the mathematics is going to come mm -hmm. from at the end of the day. It's going to be that these things are going to feed into the evaluation. I think so, and, okay. right? I mean, weren't we also saying like these are the goals that Patrick is also going to be evaluating on for this year, like that evaluation form every year we're saying, how does Patrick do on budget? How does Patrick do in staff management? I don't remember the other categories, right? And then overall, what were those, our evaluation, and then specifically, did Patrick get the bids for the roof? Did Patrick get the website launched? Or whatever the other ones are. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the, that was how I submitted my goals. And I think that's how most people did, because the things that were in the compilation uh, were, seemed to me to be specific for concerns for this year. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't very broad based. I mean, people wrote things, um, accessibility and after hours, which is something we were talking about for this year. Um, the Library of Things was specific to this year. Uh, a new web page. Uh, and then a broader would be continued updating um, of the web page, you know, as appropriate. Um, the um, participate in community information gathering, visioning, strategic planning, facil facilitate staff participation, um, community room and meeting rooms available to the public. That's a little more broad based. Um, staff meetings. And then the building and grounds issues, which seems specific to this year because they had been happening within this year, you know, the sidewalk deteriorating and the potential that the roof was leaking, et cetera. And I think to a certain extent, all of these things fall within the job description and that either circumstances require greater attention or maybe there are things that we feel haven't been getting enough attention and we want to draw attention to them. I mean, I'm happy to take the thing back and incorporate more specificity if that is the will of the board. Um, but this is this is a supplemental document. It is not a standalone document. It is not in lieu of the job description or anything. It's particular focus in the context of the current year, which is fast approaching half over. Um, I mean, even the website one, if the new system isn't going to launch until March, February? February. March, actually, I think. Is it? There's going to be all of the things that we are all relying on. I mean, we as collectively, all the Mars libraries. And that the website is part of, it's part of the package that's available, but initially, in terms of launching the system, is probably not going to be the priority. I mean, Patrick can be sure to be ready to work on that as soon as it becomes available, but I think this is going to, there are aspects of that that are out of his control. But what is within my control is to show progress towards the goals. So yes. that is like creating the content, being ready when it when right. it does hit, rather than saying, "Oh, it's now ready, and now I have to start to think about it." So mm -hmm. I, you know, can yes. I will be ready to at the point of an evaluation show the tangible mm -hmm. progress. work has been made, um, and then whatever the extenuating circumstances are, we'll just have to deal with those because that they are what they are. Mm -hmm. But um, but sure, I should be able to meet what I consider the goal, which is to do my part in furthering that. Uh, project one. And so, I, you know, I, I, I'm thinking about the, the way the evaluation went, and I think one of the aspects of this, like, set of goals that I think is important then is that before we do the evaluation, we basically have a meeting where we kind of go through the goals 
and you can sort of fill in for us, like here are the ways I've been working towards these goals mm -hmm. that you might not have seen <laughs> because I'm doing it, you know, day to day. Um, and so that, because I, I, I think that for me, one of the, the most challenging parts about the evaluation process is I, I feel like I don't have the granular information about all of the different things that you do. And if we're going to also have these goals, which, you know, involve, you know, a lot more things that you're doing, um, we're going to need to have sort of part of the process um, would be the kind of check in about the goals before we try to evaluate how well you did on the goals. Well, and we could also write that in, into the, the evaluation process that there's a mid year goal check in. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if we, you know, if others mm -hmm. agreed with that process, mm -hmm. we could certainly add that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, some of these are just like, as they're written now, they would just be continuing on versus yeah. others will have been done. So mm -hmm. it could be that if there was a mid-year evaluation, you'd be like, okay, you've already done, the website's up, great, check. And then yep. that is, you know, sure, we have to kind of discuss at the end of the year, but we've already agreed that Patrick got that whole. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's a good idea. Well, Susan and I will distribute something sooner than later that's a little more specific then. Okay. And if anyone has other comments that they would like to make, before we do that, please send them. Okay. Um, moving on to the director's contract. I had a 20 minute conversation this afternoon with the HR director and I now understand more clearly what his concerns are in terms of administrative accountability because I really didn't get that before. And the, nat the crux of the matter is, to use his metaphor, if there were some sort of problem that rose to the level of a hundred year flood, rather than a complaint that, or a comment or a request for some sort of change that was managed one on one between a staff member and the director and resolved. If there were some significant issue that a staff member would theoretically, depending on the nature of the complaint, be able to go to the Mass Commission Against Discrimination directly without even necessarily engaging the director or the board or HR in an effort to resolve the issue. And if the director is altogether responsible to the board, yet the individual is a town employee working under a contract with the town, if it were found that the complaint had merit, where would liability rest in resolving monetary or whatever the remedy might be? Because the contract was with the town, but the, the staff contract is with the town, but the director's contract is with the board. So I have a question. Oh, can I just yeah. finish a little bit first? And this has been bothering him to the extent that he did consult town council, which was not able to provide him with what he thought was an adequate means 
to kind of close that loophole. They didn't have, although he plans to bring it up again, because it's not, because the library is sort of kind of unique, where the head of the senior center and the DPW have the town administrator as their supervisor, and the police chief and the fire chief the report to the board. The superintendent, yeah, superintendent reports to a board, yeah. and all the people under them, the superintendent report, belong to a union. It's uh, that's why I'm confused. It's a very similar setup, right? Like a school mm -hmm. superintendent always reports to the school committee. So that is that not like am I like is He's that never not talked comparable? about school committee? Yeah, but that is the corollary. That, yeah, yeah that's why I was like raising my hand profusely. I was like, to me, it sounds a lot like schools. Like, if someone has a grievance, they file it with their union. Mm -hmm. You don't, you don't technically like. And union members really, you know, our union members will say they don't work for their principal. They work for the union, right? They don't work for the. So I think it's very similar. Like, I, I don't know why he's never used that analogy. Yeah. I don't know. That's my question. Like, how do they resolve it there in a superintendent's contract? Mm -hmm. And then how are other towns, I mean, I, I saw that you had talked with um, Sharon over at Amherst, right. who has a similar kind of setup. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we just look to that model or any other town that has a similar kind of structure, how are they managing this loophole? Or are they just not managing it? And somehow we're the only town that is worried about it. <laughs> I have not heard back from the MBLC, although, I mean, I my question was acknowledged, but I have not gotten any uh -huh. response. Yeah. Um, the conversation with Amherst director was if an employee has something that cannot be resolved one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. between her and her staff, then the next level of appeal is to the Board of Trustees, mm -hmm. and the next level of appeal is the, to the Town Council. Mm -hmm. um, I assume that that's written into the staff, to the contract under which the library staff work. Mm -hmm. So maybe they may have their own union, right? Like they may not be part of a... A broader one? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, maybe that's why. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if there's <laughs> so it seems like, from what you're saying, you, Troy seems to have identified a problem that even the town council doesn't see. Do they not acknowledge the problem? I mean, I, I'm not. I'm a little they bit think it's a potential problem. They don't know. They have not offered him a resolution or solution to it. He said that as things stand, that he would be perfectly fine accepting the revised language under accountability. Um, it's a, the, the section on accountability, section three, is that? Yes. That was my question. Is that the wording that? Has that been changed since? Yes. Okay. And at six o'clock tonight, I shared the document as a word, as a um, Google Drive mm -hmm. file with you. And I know it was late, but I was talking with Troy just before five o'clock. So. And so the language that's in the what you shared with us here in this Google Doc is acceptable. Yes. To Troy. Yes. Okay. And it reads, the library director is responsible for the management and operation of the Hadley Public Library in accordance with policies established by the board and requirements set forth by the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners. Duties shall be those specified. Oops. No, I'm sorry. Accountability. Yeah. 
Library director is accountable directly to the board. He will conduct the administrative business of the library in accordance with directives, policies, procedures, and guidelines established by the town and applicable to all town departments. This includes, but is not limited to, conformance with the town's personnel policies handbook, administrative directives, and terms set forth in the town's contract with the Municipal Employees Union. I mean, I think that captures the sort of programmatic responsibilities to us and the financial responsibilities. Um, it is my sense that the formation of this union is what has kind of is the hope that we're going to vote on it tonight, or we're going to let Patrick, like, what is the end? Like, mm -hmm. I printed out copies that are either, that are the same as the one that was distributed last time with the addition of the date when the longevity pay would go into effect and with the date that of the contract in which the additional five days of vacation were granted, as well as this language in the accountability section. Otherwise, the rest of it is exactly what you have seen before. I have copies if you are prepared to sign. Alternatively, we can wait until the December meeting or we could call a special meeting for the purpose of approving the contract and signing it or making any further changes to it. I, I don't want to push this if you're not ready or not comfortable. That's I wonder how Patrick feels. <laughs> Oh, uh, I mean, I, as far as I'm concerned, I know what's in the contract. I don't see a, an issue with it, although it hasn't been, I mean, I, the back and forth with Troy meant that I didn't really know if this, you know, I don't, I've read the contract. That's all I can say. I've read it. I don't have any specific concern. Um, the fact that Troy is still kind of taking issue with part of it, but if he says that it's okay, um, then I guess that was the only thing that I was waiting for, was for him to say, you know, yeah, it's fit for signing. I came prepared if you felt ready to sign it. If you don't, that is absolutely fine. I am not, I do not want anyone to feel uncomfortable or at all hesitant about signing it, and that's fine. And if you're not prepared to, then that's fine. We will vote on it at a future date and then sign it. Are you prepared to? I am prepared. I mean, unless someone had something specific that they felt was unresolved, but if, if not, if there's nothing specific, then I don't see what we're waiting for personally. Do a motion? That's what we would need next. I'll make a motion that we um, sign Patrick's contract and bring it forward. Second. Is there any further discussion? I just want to say I'm voting for the contract. I know I voted against some of the items in it, but I feel strongly that Patrick needs a contract and it's <laughs> the will of the board. So just mm -hmm. to Okay. All in favor? Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Do we have a signature sheet? Oh, we have two of them because we have to sign two of them. Now. Do they have to be in a specific ink color? No, I have purple. I think this one is black. There's black. All right, let me send it over one pen. Um. John, have you heard of anything from the friends? 
after I sent that email? No. Okay. Um, did I copy you on the email that I sent to Sharon Andrus? On the topic. John being the liaison to the friends, and please inform him of. I don't recall if I saw that or not. Okay. But I, I haven't seen anything on that topic since. She didn't reply to me. It was. Okay. At least a week ago. Um, maybe I will nudge again. I mean, I would have liked to have heard how their activity in October was with the book sale and whatever all. Oh, yeah. If you know anything about that, I would. I, they reported on it at the last Friends meeting, but I don't remember specifics. Okay. They, they considered it a success. Um, and the genealogy event that they held this past Saturday was also a, a successful event. They had like 40, 40 plus people. There oh, my goodness. Time, so. Wow. Good one. Okay. Well, they do. They are meeting next week, third Tuesday, as usual. That's the last meeting of the year. They will not be meeting in December. I think that's correct. Am I correct that Sharon is the or president? Yes. Yeah. Sharon is still the president. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I will double check her email with you later. Yeah. And go from there. Um, Joanne has an item not anticipated at the time of posting. And I also have the strategic plan. And you can do that too then. Okay, so I'll give these out rather than want to just pass them down and around. It's the timeline for the strategic plan uh, with more of the details. Is this, is this your oh. um, Patrick has seen this. We kind of talked it over. Um, I tried to list what it, it's it's still not complete with all dates but it indicates what meeting or activity happens who does it and when they do it and um part of the reason it's it is a two-sided document same paper so there is back to it um part of it was um i think when we complete a strategic plan um our goals conversation for Patrick will change, right? Like for the next year, because hopefully they will be in line with the strategic plan. So uh, what I did for this group was outline what um, comes back to the trustees and what goes to um, out to, to a larger group. So we're hoping to recruit a larger group that would come to two possibly the third meeting is more of an uh, informing meeting, but the first large group meeting is a SWAT exercise, which people don't like to use SWAT anymore. They call it SOAR. Um, showing my age, I still call it SWAT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we'd have a visioning session. Those, so the SWAT date is set right now as January 10th. Mm -hmm. And um, what Patrick and I, and if anyone is interested in joining Patrick and I, I'm happy to have people join us, is we need to brainstorm who our stakeholders are so that we can make personal asks, like getting a friend, getting you know a parent, getting like as we think about who the stakeholders are. And then we'll recruit in December and we'll put we'll also put up ads because we would welcome anyone but we really want to make sure we target our, our key stakeholders. And then we would have our swap in January. Then we'd come back to the trustees. We'd give kind of the results of the SWAT. That's the one under January 10th. Um, we might do that at a trustee meeting or um, we could have a separate meeting. We would kind of talk about what our next steps would be. Then we have a large visit, visioning meeting um, and that's where I don't know if we go to February or March, depending on how the board wants to work. Then we go back to small, and we end with the big, where we're kind of bringing everything forward. And it is Patrick, and this is where I thought about the goals. Um, according to the strategic plan, direct, the director develops the goals and objectives for the strategic plan with the staff. So that's a really good goal for Patrick, right? Like, especially if, um, 
if this is important to us. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to put this out there so all of you have it mm -hmm. and have kind of a clearer picture of what it's going to look like. Does anyone have any questions or want to join the small group of Patrick and I? I would like to join. Okay. <laughs> Is the, are you going to solicit feedback from stakeholders only at these in-person meetings? In in-person meetings, I'm That sorry. will be determined after we do a SWOT and a needs assessment that we might decide we need to have a survey or okay. a survey doesn't work. We need to have, you know, a different tool mm -hmm. or to, to get feedback. Once we decide what we want to focus on, once we do the okay. SWAT and know really what the needs are and, and it needs assessment, then we can definitely do mm -hmm. larger feedback. The reason I'm asking is because a neighbor of mine is someone who takes, who uses exclusively the home delivery service. He's going to be 92, no, he's going to be 93 next month, and he doesn't get out much. Um, and I don't know that he would participate, but I was thinking of someone like that who might yeah. have an opinion but not be able to. Yeah, um, so the way it works is you kind of go through all your stakeholders and Kind of get that core committee to come together for that SWAT so that hopefully we're getting as many perspectives as we can then we can look at as trustees like can we do this or not do this like what and, and what we want to focus on and then we go out and say maybe it's a series of small meetings maybe it's a survey maybe you know who right. knows the if there is a tool if there is a lot of homebound people to take your example and that was one of the key stakeholders and there we identified there was 12 homebound people maybe they have a zoom meeting with the mm -hmm. to rep get those folks opinions or something mm -hmm. well, yeah i mean it, yes that was just yeah. an yeah. example I'm, that I'm, i was thinking of i'm hoping that uh, i'm gonna call someone out but i'm hoping that uh when we get to the needs assessment part that's what we have really dig into Allison's background, right? Like helping to figure out how we get the data we want mm -hmm. and need. That's Happy what I was mm -hmm. kind of hoping that we could um, use your um, professional experience in doing that. Um, so really, I just want to give this out. I just want all of you to know, um, I'm happy to, s it, Jess, I'll include you on the, mm -hmm. my email to Patrick. If anyone else wants to be on it, we'll, we're going to get together informally and just kind of identify stakeholders and talk about that first meeting. Um, I'm happy to lead the SWAT. I've done them many times. I'm really comfortable doing them, so I'm not really that worried. I think that uh, hopefully we'll have enough people that will have small groups mm -hmm. and, you know, they'll do strengths, weaknesses, and then we'll do posters around and then people can go through and be like, yes, this is a strength. No, this is not. And we mm -hmm. can really narrow it down. So that's my goal. Um, Sounds good. So there's that. And then the other thing um, I wanted to bring to our attention and um, Patrick. Can I just say thank you for laying all this out for okay. us? And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just to pause to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did talk to Patrick. Uh, it, it came to my attention by reading the paper last week, and then oh. I called Molly about the refugees that have oh. been placed in a hotel in our town. There's 70 refugees with students in our school system mm -hmm. and um, families. They are Haitian families that are living in a hotel. And I just felt, I called Patrick, and I'm like, did you know? And I really feel like, and I want to say this on camera, that I hope that in the future when things like this happen, that maybe at a, a town-wide you know, director's meeting or town that, that's mentioned, because Patrick didn't know, right? And that's a place where we can be really welcoming, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have refugees in our town. Mm -hmm. We're the library, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a welcoming mm -hmm. place. Can I just so, say that I happen to be aware that someone very soon after they were put up at the hotel, someone came and checked out virtually all of the children's books that are in Spanish and there was a conversation going on today with 
Julia and someone else about um, the reading specialist was using some of those materials to be able to assess what the students' needs yeah. would be. So, so, so yeah, it I, may not be a high-profile participation. But it's but good that if our ta our library director knew when this was going to happen, mm -hmm. it would be good if we had known right. in advance. So mm -hmm. I wrote to Annie McKenzie, who's lovely and helpful and in charge of this whole thing. I cc Patrick. I had um, messaged it before I wrote Annie so that there would be no surprises. I said, do you mind if I reach out? Mm -hmm. um, and Annie uh, wrote back to us and gave us kind of a list of things that we could do, and Patrick answered that. Patrick would probably be happy to talk about what the library is doing, but I wanted to also ask, as trustees, if there's anything we want to do. Like, I looked at the Center for New Americans today, and I was like, I don't know, could we call them? Could they have classes here? I was just mm -hmm. trying to be, could we go over to the hotel and like, say the libraries down the corner, like give them a visit and give them cards to come to the library. Like, mm -hmm. I just feel like as trustees, our job is to recognize and welcome people to our town. And this is, you know, a population that's new. So, and mm -hmm. Potter, maybe you could explain, I don't want to speak for you because you're on that email too, about what the reading that Annie was talking about for the students. She, she mentioned that some of the students that are that are here under these circumstances said, um, and I don't know that I fully understand the, the story, but she said that there were some kids that um, had been really moved, or I think she used something like the phrase, like something that they had read really changed their lives. Uh, I don't really know in what way, but the idea of having some sort of like a, a community reads or something like that, whether for young people to help um, students that are here help to understand what you know, the newcomers in the school are going through or in, and to sort of help them to understand the challenges that they're facing. So the thought was to either, you know, do something either through the, um, through the young adult department here at the library and do some sort of a community read. Um, I just simply said we're happy to help. We, I mean, we help people of all types of backgrounds and in all types of circumstances. And if there's something specifically that we can do to help provide space, facilitate, you know, the use of meeting rooms for whatever kinds of meetings mm -hmm. that people may need to hold with whoever, lawyers, anyone, mm -hmm. um, school administrators, whatever, that, that the library is always uh, willing to make that available. So the people in that community should know that this resource is here for them as well as anyone else. Um, so my understanding is that there's like a, there's a, a coordinator or like a caseworker mm -hmm. or something who the town or who the state has brought in this is just from what I read in the Gazette so the, that there's someone who like there's there's someone or an organization yeah. that is that is kind of overseeing coordinating things and I'm wondering if we and can be in communication with that person so, to see what their needs are so Annie is the coordinator from our side of the town yeah and she's working directly with that coordinator Great. so okay. she's looking to gather a list right now she's just looking for a list of like names of people or organizations like a representative from an organization that would be interested in like helping so mm -hmm. all she's really looking for if we're interested in something like this all she's looking is who is the point person on the trustees how do i contact them mm -hmm. that's that's what she's looking the stuff with patrick kind of we you know we kind of got that rolling but really she's looking mm -hmm. at every organization in town and like who is going to be so I just I'm bringing that to the trustees to ask if we are interested in doing that and do we want a contact for Annie? Um, I just feel like a library should be a really safe and including place, and I feel like as a trustee that's a good way to reach out. But if we don't, we still we're still helping no matter whether we decide as a group or not. I would say yes, and if you need someone to be that contact person, I could be that person. Okay. Um, but I'm not going to step in front of someone else who <laughs> is more. Yeah. I'll send you the email, Jeff, so you can read it too. 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From Annie. She was great. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Can I ask a question? Because I thought when you said reported in the Gazette that uh, I was reading about the Climate Change Committee and how this has resulted in a new code of conduct for committees serving the town. I read that too. Yeah. Um, that? And I'm wondering um, if we've heard anything from the town about needing to adhere to a, a new code of conduct. So I'm just registering that as a question. It was literally in today's paper yeah. that the climate change committee all had to like sign off on this code of conduct because well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna summarize that situation because I'm I won't do it neutrally. <laughs> but um, yeah, just wondering if that if that's something for all town boards. I I can't remember what, how I knew about it. There is some mean, some overarching, not any single municipality focused organization has a recommendation for code of contact or code of conduct. And I know at one point, I'll go find the email, I forwarded the link to the town administrator to ask have you all ever thought about this? Have you seen this? Are you aware of it? I did not hear anything back. This summer, there was an email to which a document called the Handbook for Committees, Boards, and Commissions was sent under the chair's name and the I chair of what? Chair of the Select Beans. Oh, okay. I did not look at it right away and when I looked at it there were some things about the document that I really thought were unclear or made it incredibly difficult to read and I sent suggestions to the chair of the select board and did not hear back. Um, there was a side conversation with Molly about it and I have not forwarded it to you because it's posted on the town's website. Um, it is extremely difficult to read and understand. Uh, I will be happy to, but that's not necessarily, it talks about how to conduct public hearings, how to conduct meetings, what is expected. Um, I think it is not I think that's conduct. kind of what they were referring to in this, well, in this article today. I just, yeah, it's hot off the press, so yeah. I didn't know. I, I saw it might affect too. us. Well, I will go and find the municipal thing that I found, and I will also send you all a link to the document that is posted on the town website. Do we have any other business, any other comments, any other? I have one item of business. I regret to inform you that I am submitting my resignation. My term is up in March. I am unable to make the meetings in December, January, or February due to various commitments that I could not get out of. I was planning on moving on anyway and looking for other ways to engage with mm -hmm. the library at the end of my term. So I thought with this, this gives you an opportunity to try to bring someone in a little bit earlier that can engage in this process because this is the future. You want a future trustee mm -hmm. to help with this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happy to help with any surveys or whatever, but I'm just like, I'm literally crushed mm -hmm. with work and mm -hmm. I've got two kids going to college next year, mm -hmm. one expected, no problem when you add the second that was unexpected. Mm -hmm. It's just an extra work. I've got someone that's resigned at work. I've got another one going out with twins. So it's just, um, I'm just 
underwater, and I know I won't be able to make the other meeting, so I figure this is an opportunity. It's been a pleasure, but it's time. The tribe has spoken. I am sorry, <laughs> but I understand. Yeah. So I'll make sure to like wrap up all the minutes, because none of them are posted. But now that we've signed the contract, technically now we can release all of the minutes that have executive session. Mm -hmm. So they're all going to go public. Not that it's that exciting, but you know. May you get through it's, all of that stuff. I'm sure I will. It's like, it is, you know. Hey, well, more smoothly than that. Yeah, worse things that happen. They have. Yeah. Well, on that note, <laughs> do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye.